Mr. Speaker and members of the House, <clears throat> during my years of employment, uh, I've only served in a union for brief periods of time. Uh, when I was in high school, my senior year, I became an employee at Kroger School, at Kroger's grocery store, and also worked there my freshman and sophomore years in college, and I belonged to a union. Didn't really know too much about it, just was a part of the union. I had no need for it, because I did my work and uh, got along with the, with the management. And so I didn't know what the union was all about. I just was a member of the union. I finally got enough a, uh, weight to go and work at the mill my, my senior year, the summer between my junior and senior year in college. And so I worked in the mill for a summer. Once again, I didn't really know what the union was about. <clears throat> Became a classroom teacher, joined the teachers union, and I did become aware of the importance of, the, of unions. I only stayed in the union for five years and then I became an administrator. But because I believe so in the value of the union and its work, uh, as a building principal, I continued to pay my teachers' union dues because I believed in what they're doing. Something to what uh, Representative Bartlett said, I wanted those who come after me to be the beneficiary of those things which I enjoyed. Let me get to this bill. I'll give you a preface so that you know that, and, and the, the rest of my career, I have not been in a union. When we talk about this term, the right to, to work, the question comes up, who in the world would oppose the right to work? It is as basic as all of the freedoms of, of, of uh, speech and, 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 and the freedom of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Who would oppose the right to work? Well, the term is quite deceptive, quite deceptive. And it is with the same sense that this bill is deceptive because you're saying, uh, those of you who support it, that it is going to attract businesses into Indiana and it's going to create jobs. And who would be opposed to creating jobs? I would desire that everybody be self-sufficient and able to work. It gives you a sense of pride, a sense of self-worth. Who would oppose it? But the truth of the matter is that it does not do what you say it will do. It's misleading and as deceptive as the term is, the intent of this legislation that is. Imperial studies have shown that the right to work laws are not a solution for prom promoting economic growth. In a careful analysis, by two researchers, Sanford and Trotsky, they found that uh, in those states where they have right to work laws, they were actually worse off in terms of the gross national uh, per capita, gross state product per capita. In discussing the results, these two researchers uh, said that in essence, what right to work was, was a regressive process. They state that most important predictors for income in a state is not the business climate, as much as it is, is the stock of knowledge. And what they are suggesting is that the educational level of a state's residents is what attracts businesses to a community. They concluded that states that become right to work states tend to experience slower growth after adopting right to work legislation. Now, if it's not going to promote uh, uh, jobs and it's not going to attract businesses, what will it do? Well, let me suggest to you that I think what it's all about is about busting up unions, since you want to know the truth of the matter. It's going to cause security problems in the workplace. It will undermine wages and benefit gains. 
reverse positive working conditions, making them into negative working conditions, slow the growth, and negatively affect retirement for those persons who are working. The research also shows that those persons who are uh, with unions are uh, provide benefits for those persons who are non-union members. And I can attest to that personally. As a principal uh, of, of school, I was glad, elated, when the teachers got their raise. Because guess what? I got a raise too. When they worked on working conditions, uh, it improved the work conditions for me as well. When they worked on benefits and they got benefits, they gave us, the, the administrators, benefits. So I have been the beneficiary of, of unions, as most people who are non-union have been. We know that in every situation, every time a union person benefits, a non-union person benefits, and I just give you this one analogy. Look at the minimum working, the minimum wage that's required. Guess who pushed that? Guess who made that become come a reality? It's, it's, it's woefully low as it exists today, but it would be even lower if it wasn't for the efforts of the union. And let me also tell you something about my experience as, as a principal to talk about working conditions. As a principal, I would send in a memorandum saying that I needed something fixed in my building, something that would negatively affect children in my building. Maybe it might have been the, 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 the furnace wasn't working or some leak in the building or some other major problem in the building. And it would go for months and months with no attention. Nobody would come out to do anything about it. You know what I would do? I would go to the union and tell them to file a grievance on it. And then it would get fixed. And so the unions have improved the working conditions and the educational climate for our students. The unions have been a plus for this nation. And we know it. We know it. This is all a political move. We know this is nothing but a political football that we're, we're, we're playing with. Let me, let me just, just close with this. We had a discussion a couple of days ago about unforeseen consequences. I assure you, there are going to be some unforeseen, unforeseen consequences if you, and I know you have the power, you have the votes, if you choose to pass this legislation, uh, there are going to be some consequences that many of you are going to regret. Because when you dig a well for one person, you dig a hole for one person, you might as well get ready to dig one for yourself because there's a dangerous disease called living. What you create is a, a problem for me. It gets into your community. We, we said in, 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 in uh, uh, the movie uh, Godfather, they said, sell the drugs only to, and I won't use the word that they said, but we know what they said in that movie. And what was created for the ghetto and for African-American people, for blacks, has moved over and affected all segments of America. We don't know the rippling effect of any of our actions. And I'm saying you better be careful when you dig a hole for one, that you may be the one who will fall in that hole. What you meant for evil, and I know that it's meant for evil. I know it's meant for evil. It's for, for your personal benefits. But I, I'm just convinced that you may mean it for evil, but God's going to mean it for good. And I think this side is going to be blessed. I may not see it, but I, I think that you, you're setting us up for victory. Because the people out in the hallways are not going to have short-term memory. They're going to remember, and they're going to reward us. And I'm just, I'm just predicting that, and I don't want to be a false prophet, but I'm predicting I'm not a prophet at all. But I just believe that this situation is going to be turned around. And I know you think that you have all the power. You, got, you, you have control of the Senate. You have control of the House. You got control of the governor's office. You think you're all powerful. 
You, th you think you have all powerful, but you're not in control. You're really not in control. And you know what the point is? I've come to understand when I'm at my weakest point, that's when I'm at my strongest point. And when you're at your strongest point, that's when you're at your weakest point. And I suggest to you that you need to stop and think what you're doing. Last night, as I listened to our president, uh, whom I was well pleased, um, I then listened to our governor, and he said two things I would like to share with you. The first thing he said was that your party was a compassionate party. <laughs> I want you to show some compassion today on the people here, the people who are going to be affected negatively by this act. I want you to prove our governor right that you're a compassionate party. And then he talked about, he criticized our president for being divisive, for dividing the nation. I don't know of any, and I've been here 22 years, I don't know of any issue that has divided the state like the right to work. And so we need to deliver a message to our governor, and I say it to you, if you don't want to be divisive, then don't support this legislation. I urge you to vote no. Further discussion, Representative Porter.